Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. Here in the UK, since time immemorial, we've always been a nation of property lovers. Now in 2019, getting onto the property ladder is as hard as it's ever been. Even harder is to start developing or investing in property, but many aspire to do so. Now, whether it's with help from the bank of mum and dad buying your first property, or in fact taking those first steps into development, obtaining finance perhaps from one of the banks, development can be a possibility and it can turn those dreams into reality. Today our property developer hopefuls come up against our five angel investors, all heavyweights in the property world. They'll pitch their ideas to our angels, hoping to secure finance, guidance and advice in an attempt to turn their dreams into profitable reality. But it's not going to be easy. Our angels have seen it all before and know the pitfalls encountered on the path to a successful conclusion. Making money in the world of property development is not as easy as some would have you think. This is Property Elevator. My name's Stephen Galpin and I've spent the last 30 years consulting on property in and around London, including some of the largest towers here in Canary Wharf. And that's exactly where we are today, arguably the hottest spot for property development right now for both commercial and residential property, where over the next three years, 20,000 properties are due to come online. But today we're not here to talk about 70-storey towers, we're here to take it back to grassroots where our would-be developers ranging in property experience from newbie to done a bit will be pitching for tens if not hundreds of thousands of pounds of our property investors hard-earned money. So let's meet our angels. My name is John Howard. I'm a property developer with 40 years experience and in that time I've bought and sold over three and a half thousand properties and I'm still going. I've got a reputation for taking on huge blocks of flats. Why do I love property? I love meeting people. I love doing deals. I'm a deal junkie. What do you need to be to be successful in the property industry? Well, you've got to back your own judgment. You've got to be sensible, brave, and above all, you need to know what you're going to do if the deal goes wrong. What I'm looking for today are some good deals. If they're not good deals, I won't be investing. My name's Simon Zucci. I'm an active property investor. And since 2003, I've been helping thousands of other people learn how to be successful investors to replace their income and build an alternative for the pension. The part of property I really excel at is finding people who've got a, a difficult property problem, helping them find a creative solution to come up with a win-win that works for everybody. What I love about property is two things. First of all, you can actually work once and get paid forever. That's if you retain the property. And secondly, you can actually use other people's money to invest in property. To be successful in property, I think you need to be very persistent. It's not easy, and sometimes people give up far too soon. In the pitches today, I want to find someone who's got a great attitude, who knows what they're doing, and isn't afraid to put in some time and effort to get some great results. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer, author, and owner of PropertyForum.com. My expertise is in property development, and in particular, micro studios. I love property because it creates a passive income. It's a great way of generating wealth and freedom. I think to become successful, you need to be flexible and creative and work with lots of different people. The qualities I'm looking for today are an entrepreneur that's driven, someone that's creative and able to overcome problems when they arise. My name's Steve Jacob. I'm the co-founder of a property group and also an investor. The thing I excel at and am best at is finding deals, negotiating deals and building relationships. So I've been called a deal junkie in the past. I love doing deals in property and I love the freedom it can give you when you build your own portfolio. To be successful in the property industry, I think you need determination, passion and the correct guidance. So I'm excited to meet the pitchers today. I'm looking for someone with drive, enthusiasm, passion, 
someone who could potentially be my next business partner. Hi, I'm Jatin Ondia. We provide equity and mezzanine funding to property developers in the UK. We invite investors to invest alongside us to share in the profits of the project. The area I excel at is really looking at the overall capital structure on each deal. What I love about property is actually its underlying simplicity to invest your money. If you look at the most wealthiest people throughout the world and throughout history, they have always preserved their wealth through property. To be successful in the property industry, the first thing you need to have is immense attention to detail. If you can get that bit right, you can make a lot of money in property. What I'm really looking for from the pitches today is to, to find people that are not just passionate about property and property development, but also people that can deliver on the projects. I want to see someone who's capable of working really hard. Hello, my name's Saul Foster and I'm from Exeter. My name is Catherine Farnworth and I'm from near Preston in Lancashire. My name is Robert Bertrand and I'm from Shadow Heath in Essex. Currently I'm a management consultant working with both private and public sector clients. My day job, um, well I'm self-employed, um, I work in media, um, also I um, help my parents with their um, properties, various properties in East London, help with the maintenance um, and dealing with some tenants as well. My pitch today will hopefully put me on the right track to starting my own property portfolio. Well I really enjoy property and I have been a landlord for 12 years with a couple of properties so now I want to develop my property portfolio and work almost full time in property. My aspirations is to build my own portfolio. I mean um, just to see what my parents have achieved uh, with nothing. You know they started off with nothing. They came from St Lucia and, and came here and, and made something of themselves. So I aspire to, to uh, reach greater than that. Hi Sol, thank you very much for coming to see us today. What have you got for us? My pitch today is for a holiday complex in West Wales. The property itself is 10 cottages that would be turned into a holiday lets. It also has a leisure centre with swimming pool, squash courts, bar, restaurant. The aim of our project is to purchase the property, to renovate it and return it back to a working holiday let facility. We will be looking to take the property up to a full five star plus standard and reduce the number of cottages from 10 to 8. We would also be looking to upgrade the leisure facilities, upgrading the swimming pool, taking the bar and restaurant and turning it into a cafe bar and adding in time a gymnasium and offering these services as a local facility as well as to the residents. We would look to take the property forward on a basis where it would be mainly run online, integrating with major portals so we could then take integrated bookings from both themselves and building direct sales. West Wales is underdeveloped, especially in the five star market. There is only about three other units of comparable size, so the answer is it is very underserved at this time. We would be looking for investment for the property to purchase at 1.6 million, and we would need renovation costs of 500,000 over the first two years to bring this up to the full standard. As the main promoters here, we would be investing a lot of our time and fixtures and fittings into the property which we have valued at around about 300,000 in terms of our time, design skills and fixtures. We have to date had term sheets from funders and the best term that we've had was 90% of the value of the project that we were looking for, including the purchase funding for uh, the redevelopment costs and through asset finance. The funders have predicted a GDV at the end of the first year in terms of the redevelopment at 2.25 to 2.5 million, and in the third year, possibly up to 3 million into full operational state. We would be looking at basic sales in the first year of a negligible 50,000 this year, and we would be looking around about 200,000 in sales in the second year and growing onwards from there. First of all, sounds a fantastic place. I think what we'll do, we'll start with Steve, because Steve's a, um, Steve on the last show did a, a deal on um, in Wales, didn't you, Steve? 
Yeah. And you now know where it is. Yeah, so I know where it is. Why don't we start with you? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit about the deal. Who owns the deal at the moment? The current owner has the, that has the property is a local farmer who has tried to run the property as a holiday let business until ill health kicked in. And as such, for the last two years, he's run it as an AST, uh, short assured tenancies in the cottages and the main house. So we would be looking to end those tenancies, if not through himself or ourselves, and then return it after the renovations to the full working operation as a holiday let. Would it not be a better option to take the land on a lease option and increase the value that way? Have you looked at that? We have looked at taking the land on a deferment basis for the first year, which would bring the price of the property down to 1.1 million. But what we were looking to do was to keep the property in its entirety so we could make use of the land and especially things like the motocross, which brings a lot of extra trade over the year. Um, in terms of the event days, which can be as much as about 50 to 100,000, depending on how many people we can bring to the site. Can you just clarify, what, what, what is that 1.1 million? You, you'd 1 pay that 1 1.1 million would encompass um, the initial property of 11 acres, the house, okay. the cottages, the leisure centre. And that's an outright purchase, plus you've got stamp duty to find, of course. The as stamp well, duty would be. 4% on commercial. Yes, would be, would be reduced because it is a multi use and multi dwelling property. But you're buying it commercially, so if it's a commercial venture... It also it, falls under the FHL rules, right? so it would be both commercial and uh, personal in that use, so the, it is a much lower, and from our basic understanding at the moment, it's around about 15, 16 to 20,000 would be the final okay. stamp duty price. And have you got any other fee? Obviously, we've got solicitor's fees. Are there any other fees, any finder's fees from anybody or, or anything like that? There are no finder's fees okay. at all. I've, did it all yourself. Fantastic soul. Well done. Okay, so that, that, that 11 acre site basically encompasses yeah. the main buildings, the cottages, the existing leisure stuff, the owner's accommodation? Yes. Just not the land, the main not bulk the of the no, land. The land would be an extra 73 acres. And how much is the 73 acres? Just the extra 73 you. acres would be an extra 500,000. 500,000, yeah, the balance, yeah. And you're looking for someone to fund the whole, the whole project? Yes. Not just the 10% equity you need, you said you have funding up to 90% of costs, was it? Yes, we've got um, a term sheet on the table at the moment which brings 90% of the purchase price um, with a rolled over of six months of interest, so that puts 900,000 roughly on the table for the purchase of the property, plus 250,000 in redevelopment fees, costs, sorry, and further up to 250,000 in asset finance. You don't think you're stretching yourself to do this. You don't think that maybe it might be a better idea if you were to in terms buy a long leasehold interest in the premises to start with and, and, and get in and run it and then, and then look to buy that's it later I, on. That's what I was we, we looked at deferred options with the owner, but the owner was fortunately was not interested in deferring any option or leasing the property in any okay. way. So this is why we're Does looking Does he have at a choice? Is there, anybody, is there anybody else I, out there? I don't believe there's anyone else interested in the property at this time, no. but I believe he has other interests in his farming that he requires the money. Okay, so Simon, how, how long has this been on the market for? I believe it's been on for about a year. Right. And so is the reason he's selling because he's this ill health? Primarily the ill health, and I believe that he wants to build a chicken shed. Now, <laughs> you, uh, now, you, now, oh, you should have mentioned that. <laughs> can I just say, can I just so, say so. that could be a problem, Sol. And I tell you why it's a problem, because chicken sheds smell big time, especially in the summer. You, you don't want to really normally invest near near dog kennels, chickens. I understand, but his pigs. his farm is yep. about three miles away. You from get the, the wind property. the wrong way, straight over. Yes. But I'm not sure three, I'm sh maybe three miles is far enough, but you definitely need to look how big that chicken shed's going to be. How much does he need to build the chicken shed? I believe he needs 1.1 um, million. So oh, that's a big chicken shed. So he's not that ill then, is he? His wife's ill, who right, ran okay. the property. Okay. So <laughs> the reason I'm asking is because sometimes people say they need a certain amount of money, they don't actually need that amount of money. Yeah. So if we work out what he actually needs, how much you, you might be able to do a more creative deal here. Unfortunately, I'm not one that knows too much about chicken sheds and what their costs are. So yeah. uh, although from what I've seen, sheds are quite expensive. Whether or not he is actually 
building this, I don't know. Basically, wants a clean break from the property. Yeah. And, and you say you've got an offer of, of the finance. Um, obviously, you need the deposit still, etc. But how much is that? What kind of rates that going to be costing you? Around about one point one percent per month. Right. What about entry and exit fees? The exit fee was two percent. From and the entry fee? Finance. It was two percent. Do you need any planning? No. To, to do? So the, you're just refurbing. Basically, the property was has was existing as an FHL. Right. beforehand. So with all due respect, what, what makes you think, I know you said you've got some family with experience, you've got the online stuff, it, what thinks you can turn this around and make this a real winner? My first hotel that I worked for as general manager in Scotland, um, out in Stirlingshire, was a, began as a three-star hotel and in nine months I took it to a five-star rating. Yeah, so I'd, I'd actually like to just delve into the financials a little bit more. I thought you might. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so... I just want to understand the, the, the kind of timeline. So you buy the place, and for the first two years, you're doing the refurbishment. No, we were going to do the, refer the refurbishment in the first year. OK. That's why there's 50K, just 50K. Yes, we were aiming probably at uh, projected figures of about 15% occupancy on that of what Visit Wales and of people like Vacation Rentals, one of the biggest portals, would um, expect for us to have over that period. We'd been mainly aiming to open round about Christmas time rather than doing work and taking it through the summer months because I don't think you can actually sell holiday cottages that are cl close together in a complex with extensive works. It's like going, I suppose, off to Spain and living on a building site. So when, when are you going to hit operational break-even? We would expect to, by the end of um, the second year, we would expect that. Am I right in understanding the long-term plan with this is to continue holding it or would you want to just sell it on? We would look at a point of two or three year exit for the investor and either take it on ourselves through mortgage or we would continue on depending if the investor wanted to stay in and look to expanding the group of properties further from what we have there but to get the primary property running first. Can I dive in with, yeah, with, with something that's concerning me? And that, that is um, the renovation costs of 500,000. Um, to bring something up to a five-star rating is the top end of the game. Um, you're talking about leisure, accommodation. You're talking about motocross circuits. You're talking about restaurants, 10 cottages. Um, that looks rather light. There would be around about 200,000 that we are outline budgeting for extensions to the cottages to increase the floor space from the average of 60 square metres to 80 square metres to give them more space. The Scottish Hotel that you did, did you renovate that as well? We did. Or was it service enhancements? We basically refurbished it. We didn't do too much renovation because it was an old listed grade one building. So Sol, what are you looking for us today? What are you, what, you know, what's the deal? Investment to buy the property, to do the renovation, and to, to take this forward, as I, wouldn't, I would like possibly an equity partner to take this board, rather than going down the traditional, more Sold. expensive lines. Okay, we can't be the buyer and the seller here. Okay, so you need to tell us what you're, what's on offer. So are you, are, are you saying, well, we, I want all the money, uh, I would like 50 all the money. of the equity, or, or I would like it? all the money for 50%. Okay. Can I ask two, two clarifying questions? I mean, it's a very interesting project. Um, but two things I just wanted to check. You, you said you've got 10 cottages, but you were going to only use eight. Was that right? We were going to take two of the cottages, which are very small, and absorb them back into other cottages to increase the floor space, because they were too tight, in our right. opinion, to even get anywhere close to a grading that would be useful. OK, that's OK. That's satisfy that answer. And then, and then the other thing is, you said... You allocated three hundred thousand pounds that was for time and fixture and fittings. Do you want to tell me a bit more about that, please? We've calculated that the design time and effort, and from the three of us that we would be putting into in terms of the work that we'd be doing, and also for the fixtures and fittings that we have from previous interior design and contract furnishing business, that we would put that into the business to make that contribution towards the project. So how much are you being 
how much are you charging for your time from that 300,000? Around about 25, 20 to 25 pounds an hour. I guess what I'm trying to understand is, because normally when people come in, you have someone who finds a project and puts the time and effort in, someone else brings the money in, but you want compensated for the time, which might be fair. I just No, I'm trying to demonstrate just what we're putting in in terms be, of that. Yeah. We're not actually asking to be, yeah, to yeah. be paid fair for to, that. To be fair to Sol, so Simon, this is slightly different because he's going to be running it with his family. Yeah. The, but then is that going to be separate? The only compensation then, that we would yeah. probably take out would be from, um, in terms of, from the revenue of actually running the place, but in terms of putting the time in of building, designing, and renovating, we would put that time in for ourselves free in terms of that, and that's where that 300,000 comes from in that, that respect. So you're in for about 2.1, 2.2? Yes. What do you expect the end value to be after year two? If year two, it would be between two and a half to, to uh, 2.75, maybe three million. That'd be the end value, and then you'd go get mortgage debt on that? Yes. So you'd mortgage out about two million? We'd be, yes, you'd be looking at... About two million. And what would the running cost of that be per year? I think the running cost are around about 5,000 or so a month, X wages. Excluding wages? Excluding wages. What about with wages? With wages, depending when we bring the staff in to actually start and how many we actually finally need, we would be looking around about 8,000 to 9,000 a month. 13,000. So you won't break even year two. I think with your debt, your debt's going to cost you about 100,000 a year. Yes, it would have done. Your wages will, will then be, and that will be about 130. So you have to cover 230 grand a year to break even. Yes. Yeah. In terms of <laughs> taking the traditional funding, it, it is a stretch to get to year three. In terms of equity funding, it would be a lot easier. You know, a typical, you know, conservative, very conservative return for mm -hmm. um, an angel investor of this type, let's say 10% would be extremely conservative. I don't think any of us would really want to invest at 10% um, return per year, you know, sort of an interest rate. If you're talking three years and, you know, lending sort of upwards of a million quid, that's 100 grand a year at 10%. Mm. Three years, we, we, it's cost us. 300 grand essentially to fund that money then you're only just breaking even um it's not as an equity partner i, I no. don't find that attractive no. what do you got to remember with the, with the angel investors which is really what this is is that whatever opportunities we have and are they better than yours because obviously that's the key to this is that it, you know is how good how good is the investment for me for me soul it, it, it's not for me i'm afraid so you obviously know this market inside out. I'd suggest maybe going, to, I mean, unless one of these do it, to a local angel, someone who can believe in it as much as you, because I find it a lot easier to talk to the hotel market with local people who can see the problems as I can see them through, through my eyes. Um, but yeah, it, it, you've done your homework. It, it looks like it's going to do well for you, but it's definitely not something for me. So thank you. Uh, Simon? Um, I think it sounds like a really interesting project, but I, I kind of agree with the guys. I don't think you're adding enough value to it based on what you're spending. You're not increasing the value enough for, to have enough margin there for me. And I, I don't think the, you're going to make enough because of the running costs. So I think that this investment's not for me, but good luck with it. Yeah, I mean, just sort of leading on from what I said a moment ago in terms of the potential returns as an equity partner, putting in half, you know, all of that money, um, it doesn't make sense. I think if we came in and, and topped up your you know, your main lending as a 50% equity partner, there might be enough in it, but that's not what you've asked for. So on the basis of what you've asked for today, I'm afraid I won't be investing. Yeah, I think, I think on my end, I mean, I, I love the sound of what it is, but I think it also sounds very complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. The margins don't look like they're really there. Um, and while I'd love to back something like this, I just don't think there's enough value there to commit so much money. So. Unfortunately, I, I won't be investing either. Um, good luck with that, Sol, because I think, you know, I'm sure you'll make a go of it, but today, for what you've asked for, it's not for us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, very you. Much. Thank you, Sol. All the best. Robert, we're very interested in what you've got to say. What have you got for us? It's a developmental project in Liverpool. Well, eight single flats, one two-bedroom, and three commercial units downstairs. I was, I was, I was doing a, a location, seeing some uh, house properties last week, and this one popped up. The whole, all the premises were quite poorly managed, I found. 
after um, speaking to the builder, because it was a builder when I saw the property was showing me around. So I spent a good four hours looking at all the flats, looking at the commercial units. Um, so all the flats are empty. Two of the commercial units are occupied. Um, one of the um, units have been, it's been the same um, tenant for about 30 years. Yep. There's, um, the second one has been used, he's on a three year lease. Um, he's on there currently for a year. Whereabouts is it in the... L5, um, so okay. the, near Anfield. It's been confirmed in around 2020 there's going to be about £330 million invested in near Anfield Stadium. So two options are thinking about this, this unit. You know, do them all up to a good... Uh, to good um... What condition are they in at the moment? Well, at the moment the first floor of uh, flats are pretty much 75% done. The second level, um, some of the kitchen un units are out. There's some flooring done, so it's a bit of a mixed, a mixed level. The the lower level, there is still work to be done. So, the, is he looking to sell it as is, or is he planning to complete it then sell it to you? The main issue is he's, he's um, removed all the central heating units, so he's changing it to a different system to, to all electric to all electrics. So, for me, when factoring the costs, that is probably looking at all the work needed to be required. That involves the most costs. So, Robert, yeah. okay, yeah. so you're, you're going to be buying the deal on the basis that the central heating is, is sorted, yep. Yep, but the rest needs doing. Yeah. Right, now how much are, are you paying for it? The vendor's looking to sell at 450. Are you going to rent them out or sell them off individually? Speaking to a few estate agents, they're yep. renting out around 425 for the single lets, yep. uh, 495 for the, the two beds. Yep. The commercial units, uh, they're renting at 400 pounds per calendar month and 390 per calendar month. And you've got one empty, yeah? One empty. So What's that going to be worth? Well, it? an option I was considering was to um, offer it to the business. They do all the refurb work and give them six so months. Some rent-free rent period, yeah. OK. So, Jatin, what do you reckon? Bit of you? Um, actually, I'd like to understand a bit more about the work, so the cost. I've um, budgeted 50000 for the works. For all the works except for heating? Yeah. What needs doing to the flats? Yeah, kitchens. I mean, there are old units there. Um, you just need like updating the units. So it's a it's a reno it's a renovation rather. Yeah, it's a, it? yeah, it's a renovation. Yeah. yeah. So you have got to decorate it. Yeah. Heating will be done. Wiring. Yeah. Does that need doing? Some of the wiring. I mean, a lot of safety precautions. I mean, like in one of the fire. Of, fire. Yeah, fire precautions. A lot of that needs to be considered. Upgraded. As well. really. Yeah. So you're upgrading really more than anything else. Yeah. Are these like one bed flats? Self-contained. Self-contained um, yeah. one bed. Studios. Or studio. What's the total income? If it's all operating nicely, what's yeah. the total income? Five thousand one hundred and ten pounds. So sixty k a year. Yeah. Six five twelve. Even and I know. What that do bit. commercial valuations come in in that area? Have you spoke to any rich valuers? Um, I was going to conduct an independent valuation survey on that because I have a valuation from them based on once the renovation costs, once yes. the renovation has been yep. done, they've given me a, 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 a price of six hundred thousand. What? For the for the flats for and the commercial. For what it's all worth. For what it's all worth, yeah. Okay. Was that a commercial valuation or was that bricks and mortar? Well, it's from the it was from the bank because they've taken a loan for the um, for the renovation work that they're doing done. themselves. Have you in, ever invested in the north before? I've got a property I'm just uh, sorting out at the moment. Yeah, up in Liverpool. You know, I'm looking at this deal. It is a commercial valuation type deal. Like selling the flats is always tough. I, I don't know this area that well, but I say it would. It'll be tough to sell them off. Tell yeah, me, take yeah, it from me. It'll yeah. be tough. In, in I'd area, say if your end value six hundred, that's been given to you by a bank. I, poss I possibly think it's more. I possibly think the end value of the property is probably seven hundred thousand. If you can get Rick's value to show that the end value is going to be around seven hundred, your offer is probably going to be between three eighty and four hundred. Mm. Is that how you worked it out? That's what, how it worked out as well. Pull all your money out. Yeah, that, that and, was the um, plan. Pay all your costs, yeah. and that's where you got your four hundred offer. Yeah, yeah, it was about yeah. bang on. Because and did you value it at the end at seven hundred? They they valued it because I have spoken to the um, I got a surveyor. He needs to confirm as to when he can check, you know, to get yeah. the own independent survey. I mean, for me, it's not making enough money really um, for me to be interested in investing. I think um, your renovation costs are going to be light. On the commercial side, I'd, I'd personally want to gut those, stick some cheap flooring down, paint the walls white, and make it look presentable. Um, what the empty uh, one, you mean? The empty yeah, one, yeah, yeah. And just yeah. To, you know, it's not expensive it won't cost to do much, that, and it'll no. transform the sort of viewing effect for people. It's not one I'm going to invest in um, on the basis of. I think you'll need more money in it. Um, it's a bit, bit of a bit of a tricky one from that perspective, and also the sort of sketchy relationship with the builder and the, and the owner. 
you know, only never having seen it, that, that sort of sounds slightly I'm odd to sure me. I'm not sure that's why. I'm not sure that's um, Robert's problem, to be honest with you, is it? In I mean, fact, that could be an advantage to Robert. Well, it is if he invests money in. Have you got this worked out cash flow in about two grand out. a month? I based all the rental figures on a low, on the lowest uh, likelihood of, yeah. of, the, of the rent. Chatting? Spreadsheet? What do we reckon? Yeah, no, I, I actually quite <laughs> like it. I, I think it could be a good, uh, a good cash flow uh, model here. I, I do definitely think your refurb costs are light. If you can get it done at 50, then that's brilliant. Um, my biggest worry is actually the, 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 the hassle of managing something like this up there. And I appreciate you. You're going to have to bring in a local agent or somebody yeah. to, to do the It's vital that you, you get it managed locally without question. Yeah. You can sweat the asset. You can, you can make a good return. So I'd love to do this. What are you looking for? Um, looking for 200, 50 yeah. 50. Uh, You're looking to go to, for an investor to, to put in 200,000 pounds for a 50% stake in your property that you're buying. That's what you're asking for. Well, it'll be shared. So, every, I mean, I'll yeah. register a company. The property be registered uh, with the, the investor as well, um, and the intention is to have you know once refurb and everything's done. Yeah. You might find one of us might want to be the main you know the main lender or whatever anyway, so you may not have to do that. So chat in. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll be in for that. It's fine. Fifty fifty done. Very good. Well, it, just because you want to do the deal doesn't mean it's going to happen with you, Jatin. So ah, let's be fair. Well, let's, let's so see. So, <laughs> for me, if I can, shall I go next? My, my, um, I like Liverpool. I've got no problems with Liverpool. I've got great fond memories of Liverpool in many ways uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and, uh, but I would always be looking to sell them on again. And because it's in the, the area it's in, it'll be hard to sell them on individually. So, uh, Rob, it's not for me. But, Simon? Uh, I think the actual return you're predicting in terms of the, the cash flow is actually quite attractive. But again, I don't really want to have long term buy and hold in that particular area. Other areas, yes, but that's not really right for me. So uh, I'm not going to be investing in this, but good luck with the project. Same as Simon, I feel the refurb's probably a little bit light. I think you do need to pick it up for 400 to get all your money out. Local manager's going to be important and I'm only holding in areas that I've got full control over. So for them, them reasons, I won't be going ahead with this, but I think you're a good partner in Jat anyway. Robert, Jatin, Jatin, Robert. Excellent. I think you've got your funding. <laughs> Fantastic, well Brilliant. done, congratulations. <laughs>
could have a, an increase of £15. So the 35000 could have a little bit of an increase. The new build, the additional building at the back, they valued that at a, a cost that would be £530,000. So the build, is that to build it or to... Or once the, once, once it's, built. it's built, the value of that would be £530,000. The land value, based on the 30% rule, would be £159,000. OK, and what are you paying for that? The package price that I will pay with including planning permission would be £350,000. Package pounds. price? Yes. I've never heard it called that. Right. Oh. So for, it's for okay, just the exist, For the, the existing building. Existing only. building, you're paying three fifty. Yes. And what's it going to cost to to do the to do the new build? Three hundred thousand pounds. And who's told you that? The owner has had at the back of your um, documents, yeah. document number four. He's done kind of a, a spreadsheet with the quantity surveying. Well, so we know we'd like that. <laughs> so at the end there. So, so you've had a quantity surveyor look at it. He has. Yep. And he okay. said um, to be fully managed, turnkey would be three hundred thousand. So I've used those figures. The owner himself said you could do it for two hundred thousand, but we'll go on the three hundred thousand well, today. Don't they? So you're going to be in for six fifty. Yeah. It's all so done. okay. Plus um, stamp duty and legals, an extra yep. twenty one thousand plus interest on the loan yep. from the crowdfunding would be seven hundred twenty five thousand pounds. And what's it worth when um, it's all done? Eight hundred eighty. The income suggested by the owner would be ninety three thousand, but I'm using the figures by the investment company Very based sensible. on 75 pounds and does that include any any voids in that or so the gross income would be just over 80,000 pounds gross 80 yeah yeah and after refinancing mortgage voids management fee the net income would be 27 just over 27,000 pounds 880 at the end so 725 to do it now at the end it'd be 880 yep. with a net income of 27,000 pounds if I did use this for service accommodation at all, and I, I do believe there is potential for that. Okay, when you get the builder's quotes, bit of advice, make sure you get a schedule of works. Yeah. A schedule of works written by, by a quantity surveyor or probably a building surveyor, so they're both going out to tender on the same basis. Otherwise, you can get yourself into all sorts of trouble. Yeah, all schedule right? of works, thank you. Jatin, you're on form. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I... I, I, I I really like this. Actually, you know what? More, more than this, I actually like the way that you've approached this. This is brilliant. Yeah, great um, presentation. Very yeah. professional presentation. And and the, the, the detail that, that you've included, you know, you've thought of pretty much everything that we're going to ask. And I'm almost afraid to ask a question because you'll have a massively, you know, detailed answer for us. And, uh, you know, we probably don't have enough time on the show. This looks like a great project. I can't think of anything more to ask you. I think everything I want to see is here. Actually, the one question I did have, the, the, the target market for this is going to be students primarily, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and have you, you've done your calculations on a full 52 or 51 week rental or a 42 week rental? I've actually copied the template of the owner, so I need to check if he's on 52 or 42. Yeah, His well, current never trust, never is, trust them, no. trust yourself. <laughs> His current income is um, 35,000 with net of 28,000, but he doesn't have a mortgage and he doesn't pay for the bills. Very often well, students, they pay for bills themselves. Sounds cheap, doesn't it? Like I 60 would, quid a week. I, I, would, work, a I, would, I would work on for two weeks. But I don't know what the Preston. studio will be yeah. £75 pounds per week. Right. However, having said that, so thank you for bringing that up, the local um, purpose built student accommodation, some of which is further away than this building, charges £110. Pounds. So I have been very cautious at the £75. Pounds. Yeah, I, think, I definitely think she's definitely been cautious. Yeah, yeah but you yeah. need to be because it be, well, you need to be cautious for a number of reasons. One, because they're students. And they're, and they're not going to respect the building whatsoever. So, you know, you are going to have repairs. And you need that. And by the way, you need that spare time between the 42 weeks and the 52 weeks yeah. to do the repairs, get it, get it sharpened up again for the next round of, of uh, how can I put it, young, young aspirational... <laughs> future leaders. Future leaders yes. of this country. So they, so, yeah. So well they like can... me. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. you a couple of questions <laughs> around the, the planning? Um, so what's the sort of current planning of the existing uh, site? So full planning permission with, um, it, it needs to be started by September 2020. So planning permission is in place already? It is. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure that you were offering subject to planning. So it's in no, place. It's included. And what use is in place for? What, what use, because you mentioned a couple of potential uses. I mean, students looks like the clear yes, use. I think yeah. with any investment, you've got to be exit led. So you need to go for one use and yeah. go for that 100%. Yeah. So this is on the basis of students. So the planning um, is for student use with the studios? Yes. 
and all my numbers are around the student population. Yeah. The service accommodation was just a nice to have, potentially, maybe in the holidays or... Sounds like a red herring to me. Yeah. It's yeah. students. Oh, shiny red herring. Well, if it is only, if Not it, so shiny when you if, look at the If it is only details. four to two weeks, you could then rent it out. But you need, to, but you need to do the repairs, you need to get it sharp again. You know, they, they don't leave it in perfect condition. Sadly, you've got to have a manager to run. You've got it to man, you know, you've, you, you know, there's a lot of work involved. If I went to Preston, I'd be doing service accommodation 100%. Some people can get caught with this because what happens is the local, the university then builds a load of, load of accommodation for themselves, uh, and that can obviously depress the rest of the rental market for students. Are they, have they, do you know how many they've got themselves and they manage themselves or? They have built themselves. They have got um, a, about five or six, if I remember correctly, around the, yeah. the university. This is closer than some of them. Yes. And are they are they are there plans for them to build more? I need to check that. Yeah, because that's quite important. In most student areas, because of these new builds, yeah. there is an oversupply. But there are still students who don't want to live in a big purpose-built block because it feels very institutional and they like to live in a house. But why or students? A but why are we so focused on students? If there's because right next to university. Because right next to university, university city. Yeah, but if there's a studio apartment, a professional tenant would be preferable. Well, my, my point was, can it be repurposed in yeah. case a student market Simon's right. goes yeah. away? Can you yeah. put young professionals in because it's close to the train station, etc., yeah. etc.? Et and of course, it's brand new. So you know, they, I think you know we don't want to be. Speak. I've done the, the students really for a worst case scenario figure and I so everything here is based on students. The service accommodation was maybe a nice to have but not included in the figures. The rental income document at the back is from the owner based on what he does which probably was 42 weeks. The eight bed HMO that, but I will check, the eight bed HMO that I'm getting just around the corner is going to be young professionals. Now the young professional um, room rate the average in Preston is 90, with the maximum being 120. This is as close to the train station as the university. So I do believe this is worst case scenario, and I'm being cautious, but I do believe there's also um, a potential for a, a young professional market, as you, as you suggest. Yeah. Catherine, yeah, Catherine, thank you very much. You've, you've done a, a fantastic pitch. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's see how everyone else thinks about it. If I were looking to do a property like this, I would want to be seeing, uh, an end. if I was putting 725k into something in the northwest, I'd want to be seeing an end value of um, over a million, probably more 1.1. So, for that reason, I wouldn't do this deal. But um, I think you presented really well, and I wish you all the best for the deal. Really. Thank you, Simon. Um, excellent presentation, and I think it's an exciting project. The, the margin isn't quite enough for me. I think you'd need to leave a chunk of cash in. So, kind of on a similar vein to Steve, really. Um, and I think I like the fact that students or young professionals it can be cross-purpose. So um, I think I'm not going to come into this one, but I think for the right person, it's going to be a pretty good deal. If that was a 22-bed HMO, I'd be all over it. Um, I'm not um, hugely expert in the student market. I know enough as, as anyone else does. But for me, I'm, you know, I like the HMO model you're actually working on. Um, so if you get any other deals there, let me know. For, for this oh, one, that's not I am. Well, that's I nice. yeah. if, if the fallback option, <laughs> this is HMO, if the fallback option is C3 and it hasn't got the tie to students and there is a good fallback for an HMO, I'd be interested. Um, but on the assumption that it's probably not. I'm going to um, check it within five minutes of leaving this room. Okay. <laughs> um, then that will be the reason I'm not going to invest for the student okay. use on this particular site. Thank you. Anyway, Thank you, though. Thanks. Great presentation, though. Thank you. What I really like is the future stream, the pipeline of deals that I think we could do together. And I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not sure I actually understand all the numbers we've gone through, probably because we've gone through them quite quickly. Um, the, the, the margin looks okay, not mind-blowing. But I think once we've kind of dug into it, done a bit more due diligence, I think there could be something here we can support. And one of the reasons I think we could do this is I want the future pipeline as well. So through, through our platform where you know, we have a lot of people that want to invest in UK property and we need to work with people like yourselves, you know, if we could provide the cash, you could just go and do deal after deal. So, um, so on, on my end, you know, yeah, we'll be happy to provide the equity um, on a 50-50 basis. Okay, thank you. If you come across something where we can buy and sell it, refurbish it, split it into, in, into a number of flats and sell them off individually, that's what I, that's my expertise. So certainly please do keep in touch, not just with some of them, these two, but also me going forward. And Catherine, thank you very much. And I think you've got yourself a, um, 
a great man. Great. If she well, wishes she to accept. Yeah. Yeah. If she wished to accept. Well, I, <laughs> because the investment is 25% of the whole project, I was not looking to do the 50-50 split. Um, do I have to... Can I not talk with you about that? No, <laughs> do I have to decide that? Everything's negotiable. You need, Everything's to, negotiable. You, need to, yeah, so you need to have a think about it. It, yeah. within, within 30 seconds and, and let us know. So, let's be clear. So, so you've, already, you've already got it funded. You're looking for the deposit money, 187,000. Yeah. And so it's, what percentage are you prepared to give up and so what percentage are you prepared to accept for that? Well, actually, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make life easier for you. What we love doing is working on kind of overages and shortfall provisions. So if you hit certain targets, you can keep more of the, 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 the amount on top. If you don't hit the target, we take more of the percentage uh, to make up for that. There's got to be a deal here, I think. So, There's got to be a so deal. Is there, <laughs> so, so I, I would like to work with you because I'm going to speak to somebody about a portfolio impression that is quite significant. So I do mm. think there's and they a need great to ring me on that afterwards. Opportunity to be had. <laughs> yeah, unless it's boring, in which case unless they should call you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unless it just makes money. What are we doing here? So, so I, I, I guess there's a deal, but but we need to have a, a well, chat. Well, no, we need. Well, we need to decide now. This is the, <laughs> the whole point of the show is that we end up with a decision one way or the other. So, y what what is your what do you require? I need uh, 187,000. Right, and are you... Are and what you, are you giving for that? <laughs> In my mind, I had 10%, but I don't think you're going to accept that. That's but I, right. So, between 10 and 50, and then... <laughs> but I think if, with the situations that you just mentioned, I think that would obviously would require... ..further conversation. So that would... In, in terms of now, this moment, I'm sure you, you need some agreement, then it would be around that. What we would do is agree that hurdle rate, and if you achieve more than that hurdle rate, you can take 75% of everything above that uh, above that level. Mm -hmm. But if you don't hit that hurdle rate, if it's exactly at that hurdle rate, it's 50-50, and if it's below that hurdle rate, it starts moving in our favour. So the idea is that actually, if you blow it away and really get a, a fantastic return, you get a whopping upside. Mm, that sounds good, and I really don't want to miss this opportunity to work with somebody you know, more experienced, and I think together you can achieve more than on your own. So, yes, please. That's it. Congratulations. That's a deal. A deal. <laughs> well done. Absolutely.